in her first daytime interview since coming out. Shantae Harris, AKA The Brat. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Hi. Hi. Oh my God, what an intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, Girl, it was written was and produced. Listen, it was written and produced by my team because we're all fans around here of your music and now this personal side of your story. I have to tell you, I can always see people on Zoom right before we go on and I saw you take that deep breath because this is, this is a journey. This is something that as confident as you are on stage, I know that you're nervous about this. Absolutely. Why are you nervous? Uh, it's just something that I'm not used to talking about publicly. So it's been so many years and I've kept my private life sacred. So, you know, the whole intro that you just showed, I was like, oh my God, we're gonna talk about X, Y, and Z. Ooh, okay, girl, never talked about that before. So yeah, my nerves are a little bit shot, but I'm gonna be okay. Well, listen, we <laughs> always say around here, this is about living your life, not defending your life and right. giving people a safe space to talk. And, and I want to start at the beginning, because, you know, I lived in Chicago right around the time you just exploded, and everybody mm -hmm. wanted to collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. But well before that success, you were this church kid wearing conservative mm -hmm. clothes, playing, you know, instruments at church. That was the center of your universe uh, as yes. a young child. What was that like? Well, I, my grandmother was saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. So that is what my family abided by. And in her household, we went to church five, six, seven days a week. There was Bible class, prayer meeting, choir rehearsal, saints meeting, foot wash meeting, communion. Like, and so my outlet was music. Uh, I played the drums. I played seven different instruments in high school and in uh, junior high, and I would bring those instru instruments to church to play with the choir. So music was my outlet always. So it was very strict. I had to wear, you know, uh, skirts past my knees, pretty much down to my ankles, mm -hmm. no toe and heel out shoes, no makeup. You can't cut your hair. Uh, oh my goodness. It, it was so many things. You couldn't listen to worldly music, anything mm -hmm. outside of gospel music was worldly music. So that wouldn't fly either in my grandma's house. You know, when we look at the images, especially around that time, you know, this was well before Little Nas X and other people had come out. There was mm -hmm. no blueprint, I would imagine, no one for you to really talk to. Well, I did have one great friend, Stephanie Gale, who helped me along the way through a lot of my emotions and stuff, and I could talk to her about anything. And I also had a best friend in Chicago named Nicole Simpson. So I had a couple people that I could really vent to and talk to that, like, kind of know everything about my life. But it was rough because I felt like I couldn't share with anyone else, and I just wanted to keep it to myself because people get... Back then, you got ridiculed. You had all types of things happening. I remember Ellen came out. She lost her TV show. People didn't like her anymore. So back then, it was very different than it is now. Absolutely. You know, and to your point, here, Ellen at that time, we all know her now in her successful form, but she mm -hmm. went out on that limb, and, and we watched her lose everything. In the hip-hop world, what do you think would have happened if you had revealed this back then? I'm not sure what would have happened, but guess what? I sure didn't find out. I didn't want to find out, and I didn't find out. And I decide to carry it as keeping it something sacred for myself because everything else, whether it be lies or not, was exposed. Yeah. Were you worried about being exposed? I mean, this is obviously before a lot of these viral videos and some of the tabloids, though, that exist then are and were vicious. Were you afraid that this would be in the wrong hands used to hurt you. Because you weren't, to your point, you were keeping it private. And I always tell people there's a difference in privacy and secrecy. This was your well, private life that you didn't owe anyone, but you know right. that it could have been used to right. hurt you. Well, you may have seen me out, but I would never put myself in a position to get hurt right. or be caught. I would never hold hands or do anything improper in public. So everything I did personally was private. I made sure of that. I won't send a naked picture, a naked video, anything, because it may possibly get out. And I didn't want to take that chance back then. Now, who cares? But back then, like, it was, yeah. you know, serious. Yeah. So 
I just didn't want to risk any of that and lose anything or have people judge me. Because when you're new to the game, you worry about what people say. But when you've been in it as long as I have, you don't give a damn no more. You just live your life and you want to be happy. <laughs> Jessica's largely seen as a branding guru and she joins us to talk about their relationship. Jessica, thank you for joining. It's so interesting, your background. And I make the point about kaleidoscope and branding because so much of what the brat was worried about prior to meeting you was, you know, protecting her privacy, the image, the branding. What did you tell her when it got to the point where you decided to come public with this relationship? Well, I was more, more concerned about her happiness. I was mm. more concerned about um, her living out loud. It was, it was more so we were in public and she would want to hold my hand and you could see she would want to hold my hand, but it, there would be some hesitancy because of how she had been in the past. And I just, I'm, I'm for, I love her. I'm for whatever she wanted. I just, I, I spoke, I didn't, I didn't try to convince her of anything. I think it was more so me just living my life out loud and she see how comfortable I was within that. And she just was like, hey. Um, what was it about this relationship that gave you the confidence uh, to be so public at this time in your life at 45 mm. years old? Yeah. Yeah, stop telling my age, girl. I'm trying to pass for 32. <laughs> Goodness, girl. <laughs> Dang. She was kind of aggressive. <laughs> like, she was the first person to say, I'm interested. And I'm like, oh, what? And immediately I got nervous, shy, spilled my drink, started dropping stuff, breaking stuff. Like, it, it, she totally, like, broke me down because I was like, Oh my God, what's happening? Right. And then the way she would make me feel, like she would make me feel so special and so many things that I never paid attention to about myself or that maybe I had never been told or like her attention to detail, right. you know? It was just really, you know, compelling. And it was, I, I just, I didn't know what to say. And I just felt like this was the best feeling I had ever had in my life. Were you worried the minute you, hit send on that post, making the relationship, as they call it, Instagram official, that she would experience some hard days with family, with friends? Were you worried about that? Whether it turned real or not, were you worried about that? Um, I really wasn't. I think for the most part, because the person that she spoke of that was highly religious had actually passed on. That's something that she holds very near and dear to her heart. So I wasn't worried that her family was going to say anything. I mean, before I hit sin, I, I'm in touch with her family. I've, I've talked with her mom. I've talked with everybody. So not asking if we could come out or anything, but more so had, have a relationship and had communication with them. I at all wasn't worried. I felt like I don't see what anybody could say bad about this. There's, there's, there's nothing bad about this. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will want to support you within your troop. Your, your true supporters will want to support you within your troop. And when you do have that small percentage of people that have any kind of opposition towards it, that comes naturally, whether you're being happy or not. Thread, you know, a lot, a lot of young people, even in 2021 right now, will struggle with wondering and fears of parental rejection, um, rejection on many levels and taking this bold step. And they'll look at you and they'll say, I'm inspired by her. I'm inspired that she took this step. Was, was that in the back of your mind? You inspired a generation of young women to jump into the hip hop game. And you very well may inspire many kids, many people, adults who are still holding on to their truth because of fear. Well, I think it's an honor to inspire uh, up and coming hip hop artists or female artists uh, wanting to get into the game of hip hop. Um, and I had no idea or didn't even think about the people that I have inspired as far as living in my truth. Like, I don't th think about that part. It's amazing. It's a great feeling to know that that's happening, but I'm just making myself happy finally and living in my truth and 
whatever it does and if it inspires people that is amazing because that's what we love to do we love to give back inspire people help people bless people in any way possible so that does my heart good it fills my heart like but i didn't expect that i didn't think that ahead of time i was just happy and we were joking around one day saying i'm gonna post it i said no i'm gonna post it and she was trying to beat me to it then i was trying to beat her to it then when she posted i was like bitch i guess we just came out <laughs> Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, my God. But I got so much love and so many people saying wonderful things to me, supportive things like, girl, we so happy for you. We right. see your glow. Right. And it just made me feel so good, like a weight was lifted, Tamara. And I promise. So, Jermaine, thank you for being here. Thank you. You know, Jermaine, we've been talking with the brat. She says this is the most revealing interview that she's ever given about her relationship. How did it feel to watch her take this huge step in her personal life? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel, um, I guess, pleased that she finally, you know, got to a space of comfort. You know what I mean? A lot of times people don't, um, that's a hard thing to do, you know what I mean? Just to get to that space of comfort and not care about what people, you know, care about what people got to say. So. Um, I'm just happy that she's in that space. Cameron, yes, this, this is the first time I have ever heard JD mention anything ever in my whole life about who I'm dating, what I'm doing, who I'm seeing. And they reached out to him to comment when I came out. He turned them down. He wasn't doing the interviews. Like he really like doesn't like interfere with my life. He lets me like live and mm -hmm do whatever it is I need to do to, you know, make myself happy. Just like coming up as kids, I wanted to a drum machine. I wanted to make beats just like him. I wanted to be just like him. Mm -hmm. He bought me a drum machine, but he didn't teach me how to work it. He wanted me to sit there <laughs> all day long, every day, and watch him. But I had other stuff to do. I'm like, if you just show me, he would not show me. Like, he's a tough cookie, so I'm grateful for this interview. And it's dope to hear him say that about me and my relationship and me being happy. Well, you are surrounded by love and two adorable puppies and clearly a <laughs> wardrobe stylist that can change you in seconds. I'm no I, I, wardrobe stylist. That would just be me. Though. <laughs> Listen, she did it herself. She learned the drum machine by herself, and she and I have a whole team helping me. Well, you know what? Congratulations, <laughs> Jessica, on your success with Kaleidoscope and Hair and this new journey of love that you're both sharing. Thank you so much, Jermaine Dupree, for all the hits. And uh, I, I really you. know that at the end of the day, for you, the brat, this is not about music. This is about life. And let me say, I'm so proud of you, and I know you will inspire so many people watching today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Absolutely.